Hello and welcome back to another Code Pro tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be learning how to dismiss a UI text field keyboard. We are going to learn how to dismiss when we press the return key, when we press a button, say a login button, or when we tap outside of the text field, maybe inside of the view. Uh, we're also going to learn a little bit about the UI text field delegate and some of the important methods that we can use from it. So to begin, open up Xcode and let's get started. So once you've got Xcode open, the first stop we're going to make is in the main storyboard. Uh, and we're going to start setting up our user interface for our UI text fields. Uh, so we can create something that kind of looks like maybe a login form with a username and a password. Uh, so the simplest place to start would be going down into the object library here, and we're going to look for UI text field. And you'll have, we'll have two different types. There's a text view, which is for multiple lines or kind of like block text, and then there's text field which is more for like individual lines uh, of input. So we'll go ahead and drag a text field onto our view controller. And uh, I'm gonna use two of them here, so I'm gonna just uh, drag another one on. And we'll go ahead and try and get our interface um, kind of flushed out here. So um, what I'm gonna do here is just increase the width of these a little bit and uh, increase that and try to center them as best I can. Uh, what I'll probably do is put these in a stack view. Um, so this is on Xcode uh, 9. Um, so obviously when this changes in the future, Interface Builder might have different options um, in Xcode 10 and so on and beyond. But what we can do here is we can hit this button for embed in a stack view. Um, and that kind of puts um, our, our views on top of each other. And actually, I want to do one thing before that. Um, I want to actually fix the width of these so they, they'll stay at this width. Uh, so before putting it in a stack view, I'm just going to put a uh, width constraint on that. And then I'm going to embed it in a stack view, hitting this button here. And that'll keep our text fields nice and fixed. And once I've got that kind of how I want it, um, if we go up to the attribute inspector here, um, there's a spacing attribute. So if we start to increase the spacing, we can increase the vertical space between our text fields uh, to add a little bit of padding in between them. So I think 20 is probably pretty good for, for, for what we want to do here. Uh, one other thing I want to do is go over to the document hierarchy here. And if you don't have this option open, there's a little icon right here to expand and collapse it. And so what we want to do is start at the view controller and then drill down to the stack view. And once we have the stack view selected, we're going to go ahead and add some constraints to it. So what I'm going to do here is horizontally and vertically center the stack view, which will keep us right in the middle here. And let's see if we have any auto layout issues. We do not. So looks like we're good. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to do in here is just change the view color because it's a little hard to see with the, uh, with the text fields being white. So there we go. That gives us a little bit of... Um, a little bit of contrast. And um, from here, let's go into the view controller and start hooking up the code. Next, let's open up the assistant editor here by going to Xcode and clicking this button here. And let's bring up our storyboard on one side and our view controller on the other side. And what we're going to do here is hook up our interface builder outlets to our text fields. So what we can do is select our text field on the left side Hold down the control key, click and drag over to our view controller and create the outlet. And I'll just call this text field one and connect that one. And I'm going to do the same thing for the text field two. So we'll just hold down the control key, click and drag over, and we'll call this text field two and hook up that connection there. And uh, I think it's probably going to be uh, a good idea to add a button to our view controller. So I'm going to do that just because it's going to make more sense later on in this tutorial. So just go to your object library and look for a button and drag that back over onto your view controller. And we can kind of put that uh, just kind of underneath the forms. Uh, we'll just try to position that somewhat like that. And for the auto layout constraints to get it where you want it, Probably the best thing in this situation is going to be to put a, a top constraint uh, to pin basically the top of the button to the bottom of the second text field like that. 
and uh, we can then probably horizontally center that in the middle so it's a uh, nice and centered and uh, below uh, our text field um, and I'm just going to change the text um, to uh, we'll just use uh, some kind of login uh, just to simulate like that kind of a flow and just make it black or uh, not the text color but the uh, uh, yeah oh it's not changing that there we go. Let's change it. I'll just make it bold, just so a little bit easier to see. And so once we've got that in place, um, so that's fine. And we'll do one other thing here. Is we're going to hook up the uh, button click for the button. So we can do the same thing. Uh, hold down the control key, click and drag over. And um, instead of outlet, we're going to create an action. And we'll just call this um, login tapped. So, so far we're pretty good um, and we're ready to go here. Um, now, one thing we need to address is when we tap our text fields, we need to bring up the keyboard. Um, we need to dismiss the keyboard when we're done entering input. And we probably also want to have a way to dismiss the keyboard if we tap outside of the um, text field. And so this is where the UI text field delegate comes into play. So what we're going to do next is create a function to configure the delegates for our text fields. And we'll start by creating a function just called private func configure text fields. And we're going to call this when viewed at load gets called. So I'm just going to clear this uh, default text here and call configure text fields. And once we've done that, we'll assign the delegates in this method. So we'll just do text field one that delegate equals self and text field two dot delegate equals self. Now, if we try to actually build this right now, we're gonna have a problem. Um, the problem is right away you'll see here that we cannot assign value of type view controller to the UI text field delegate um, because right now view, UI view controller um, doesn't conform to that protocol. So what we can do to get around that is create an extension on view controller and that extension is going to be um, for UI text field delegate and so basically at this point we're saying that our view controller has now become the delegate for UI text field um, and if we command click on UI text field delegate let's take a look at some of the methods in here from this protocol um, so we have a few different options in here. We have a lot of things that happen for when the text field starts editing, finishes editing, um, when characters start to change, when a user's typing things in, when they clear things, um, when the text field should return. So like this, for example, this method is obviously one we have to implement because when the return key is pressed, we want to resign or dismiss our text fields. Um, so this is very important for us. So let's go ahead and start implementing the methods from UI text field delegate uh, to be able to properly handle dismissing the keyboards and the various different states that they go through. So at this point, let's fire up the simulator and take a look at um, some of the settings we have configured right now. Uh, one of the things we're going to need to change is regarding the keyboard uh, on the simulator. If you're on a real device, this, is, this won't be a problem, but for a simulator, it will be. So if you click into the text field, you'll see no keyboard comes up. Um, the reason for that is it's using the actual um, like Mac keyboard, not using the simulated keyboard. So we need to change that. Um, if we go with, with the simulator selected and go to the hardware menu here, let's look for keyboard and there should be a toggle software keyboard option. So if you click that, that brings up the actual software keyboard. Um, and so the problem now is if we start to type into this keyboard um, and we press the return key, we can't dismiss it, it's, it's stuck, and that's not good. So uh, to solve that problem, um, this goes back to what I was saying in the UI text field delegate. We need to implement the text field should return method. And so if we go back down to that extension that we had created here, if we start typing text field should return, we're gonna get the method signature kind of spelled out for us, and then we can go ahead and actually stub that method out here. And so what we want to do is take a look at it. Um, it provides the text field that was being interacted with by the user, and it returns a Boolean. 
uh, true or false. Now, if you take a look, uh, if I can pull up the documentation here, uh, it may or may not show it in the quick help. Sometimes it does. Let me see if I can, let me return true. Let's see if that fixes it. Because we're going to want to return true here, but I want to actually read what Apple says in the documentation. And sometimes it doesn't always work from Xcode. Um, that's fine. But basically they tell you um, that if you want to resign the keyboard, um, what you need to do is call text field dot resign first responder, which notifies, uh, according to what it says right there, this object has been asked to relinquish its status as first responder in its window. Um, so now if we return true and we call text field resign first responder from in here, we'll, we'll, let's see what happens now. So let's rerun our simulator. and bring back up our keyboard. We can start typing around here. We'll go ahead and hit the return key. And you'll see that right away our keyboard is dismissed. Try the second text field. Go ahead and start typing. And we hit the return key. And you'll see that it is also dismissed. So that's the reason for that is because we've assigned both of these delegates here. Had we assigned just this delegate, but maybe we forgot to assign this one, then if we typed in text field two and hit the return key, it would not dismiss. So it's very important that for each text field you assign each delegate accordingly so that we can resign it when we need to. Now, for the next part of the tutorial, I want to cover when we tap outside of the text field to dismiss it or if we press the login button. And one problem we have right now is our login button is getting covered up by the text field. So we can kind of quickly remedy that by selecting all of our UI elements in here. And we can kind of just scoot them up a little bit. I'm thinking that's probably pretty good just so that our uh, text field is not blocked. Um, maybe a little bit a little bit down. And you'll notice here that I'm, for resolving auto layout issues, all I'm simply doing is updating the constraint constants, and that'll uh, just tell the constraints that everything should live there instead. So um, <clears throat> let's um, go ahead and start hooking up the next piece. So what we need to do next is when we tap anywhere outside of the, of the actual text field, we'll dismiss the text fields. Um, and we're going to do that using a UI tap gesture recognizer. So back in our view controller here, for our, our tap gesture, what we'll do is we'll, con we'll go ahead and configure it right after um, we configure the text fields here. So what we can do is create another function called private func configure tap gesture. And we'll go ahead and call that right here. And let me just put this back in the single editor view so you can see this very clearly. Um, so there we go. And what we'll do here is let tap gesture equals UI tap gesture recognizer. And we'll do the uh, initializer for the target and the action. So the target will be self. Um, and the action will be the selector. So it's gonna be what method gets fired. So what we're gonna do here is do hashtag selector, and this is gonna be view controller dot handle tap. And now we haven't created a method for this just yet. So what we need to do here is this is gonna be the method that gets called when a tap is detected. So right below this, we'll do a func handle tap like that. Let's verify that our, our error goes away here if Xcode picks that up. And uh, let me see here. Add OBJC to expose this instance to Objective-C instance. Yep, okay, so that's fine. Um, let's make sure here that we resolve that and it looks like we're good. And uh, what we need to do is add the tap gesture to the view. So we can do view.add gesture recognizer and we'll add the tap gesture. Um, so we can even put a print method in here. Handle tap was called, if we wanna make sure we're actually getting called there. And so we're almost done. The next things we need to do here are dismiss the text fields when we tap outside or when we tap the login button. And it's really simple. Um, if we start here, what we can do is view.end editing with the force parameter, and I'm gonna do force set to true. And Let's see if we can take a quick look here at the documentation. So it looks like Xcode is working with me right now, and it says that this method causes the view to resign the first responder status or one of its embedded text fields. 
This method looks at the current view and its subview hierarchy for the text field that is, that is currently the first responder. If it finds one, it asks it to resign. Um, if the force parameter is set to true, um, the text field is never even asked. It's just forced to resign. Um, so if you a little more aggressive by passing in true here. We would do the same thing here for the login button. So if we do view dot end editing, and if we set that forced true, let's go ahead and run this in the simulator and see what this looks like. So now let's test out our scenarios. Uh, so first one, text field one, brings up keyboard. We tap outside, anywhere in the view, dismissed. Uh, do it again, and um, tap the login button, dismissed. So far so good. And verify that our return key still works as well. So text field two, same idea, tap anywhere outside, dismiss. Uh, click in again to bring it back, tap login button, dismiss. And finally, the first case is tap return key and dismiss. So there we go. Um, all of our basic use case scenarios for when we want to dismiss a keyboard, um, for the most part, have been explained. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure you follow CodePro on social media and let me know in the comments section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.